I'm excited to introduce you to five people who've gone through the higher learning program. And uh, the first is Dennis and Vega. Oh my gosh, Dennis. Um, Dennis has been an absolute pleasure to have in the program. So Dennis is and was a professional geologist. So after spending over a decade as it, in a very successful career as a geologist, um, working for probably one of the world's largest energy producers, uh, he pivoted his career to become a commercial banker where he is currently doing that at, uh, at BBC. And he hasn't looked back. So he's got a really phenomenal story. Uh, Joanna Wynn, uh, she has, uh, has also made a very successful pivot. And I'm, I, when I hear her story, it's, I, I get a little bit scary, scared myself because it took a lot of courage, I think, for her to do what she did. So after nearly 15 years as a senior land negotiator with the same company, uh, one of Alberta's largest producers, uh, she was very excited to be able to make the transition into technology at a company called Avanti Software, where she's now manager of the client success team. Um, and then we have Zach. Uh, Zach uh, has uh, started, his, he's a professional engineer, uh, MBA, started his career as a project manager or project engineer, I should say, in oil and gas, um, and probably, gosh, almost 20 years ago and uh, then worked his way into roles such as business analysts for some of uh, Alberta's top energy producers as well. Um, and recently he, he just pivoted to the agriculture industry where he is currently a business analyst at a company called BASF. Uh, Youssef Kazravi, he is also an engineer and uh, his, he has a very successful or has had a very successful international career that began at probably one of the world's largest oil and gas service companies. So he started his career as a field drilling engineer and then later assumed roles in a number of things, including field service and operations integrity manager, that sort of thing. Um, and then last year, he successfully pivoted his career into the tech industry as well, where he is currently an operations manager at Amazon. So you can tell by his background where he is working. Uh, and then we also have Kevin Asani and Kevin's got a very interesting story because he successfully pivoted after spending several years as a you know, in project engineering and leadership roles in the drilling industry and, uh, and made a pivot into a mining technologies company and later decided it wasn't for him. So everybody's got a really, a really great story. So I would just like to welcome everybody. Um, so uh, can I just start with you, um, Dennis, can you just give us a little bit of uh, background as to, you know, was your pivot intentional or accidental? Um, you've got a terrific story, and I was wondering if you could maybe just share a little bit of that. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jackie. Uh, so it all it all started um, uh, when I was, um, you know, planning to move fully to Canada. I, I remember, like, you know, trying to find out, like, hey, I understood what was going on, that in the oil and gas industry in Canada, like, you know, what was going on, like, there were no jobs, like, geologists weren't having jobs. So, and I knew, I, you know, I was going to be living in Canada. So I was like, you know, I started thinking ahead. I still remember sometime early in 2016 or so, I, you know, I call, I call, I called Jackie and I was like, hey, I'm this dude in Nigeria, you know, trying to move to Canada, but I don't know what I'm going to be doing, you know, and, you know, we had that good conversation on the phone and she said, hey, you know, when you're in Canada, you know, um, let me know when we're going to chat more. So that's all where it all started. Uh, just to rush back to December 2016, I got laid off. Uh, I used to work for Exxon and I got laid off in 2016 and I was like, okay, you know, I got laid off and I, I moved to Canada. At once I got in, uh, got to Canada, um, immediately I, I reached out to uh, Higher Landing, just like, you know, we had a conversation about a year ago. And that was where it all started, where, you know, I started learning things about connecting your head and your heart and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, for the first time I started, you know, realizing, you know, started thinking about why I did what I did. And I realized that I, I was only a geologist because of you know, where, you know, in the country I come from, you know, working as working in the oil and gas is the best way to be prosperous, right? Uh, and I did it for my family, you know, just to be able to help family and all. That's why I did it. But it wasn't something I loved doing. 
you know, so in during that program, I started finding out like, you know, who really I am. You know, I just realized that I'm more of a relationship builder. I love people. I like being out there. I like helping people. You know, like I don't have to think to help. You know, it just happens naturally. I just love it. So during that program, I started, it was like an awareness for me. And I was like, you know what? The best thing that happened in my life, if I could remember, I was working in a bank as a customer service representative. You know, and it was best because there were 10 people in front of me and all the other customer representatives had nobody. So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to try this. You know, I'm going to, you know, uh, prove it out. So, and that's it. I um, applied for uh, the bank job at the call center at ATV, started at the call center. And interesting, um, you know, that's why I proved that hats to so mine. Hold on a second, Dennis. I just want to stop you there because I think this is really important. So essentially, so you were making um, a very large salary working for Exxon, I think it was, um, yeah. inter yeah, geologist. Mm. And what was it like taking, you know, a job, like probably one of the lowest jobs on the totem pole in a bank as a customer, uh, as a call center rep? What was that? What was that like for you? You know, uh, a couple of things. You know, first of all, I, I, I tried my best to prepare myself for the shock I was going to have. That was something I pre I tried. However, I still remember after the first two weeks at the call center, when I received my paycheck, I went into the bathroom to cry because oh. it was the lowest paycheck I've had in 15 years. So um, it was difficult for me because I didn't know how I was going to survive. But, you know, while I was, you know, in the bathroom, like tears coming out of my eyes, you know, there was this thing that told me, hey, you know, if you follow your hearts, if your mind connects with this, you're going to do well at it. So... I came out of the bathroom believing that it was going to be fine. And, you know, that's what, you know, things changed from there, from the call center. Somebody referred me to business banking because this guy is a great relationship builder. You know, from business banking, I went to, you know, another, you know, so I just, you know, in three years, I became senior, you know, senior manager of entrepreneurship. And people asked me, do you have an MBA and all that? I was like, well, no, I don't have any of those things. So, so, you know, to be honest, it's just connecting that heart and mind and knowing my value, you know, what my passion is, you know, what I really wanted to do. And to be honest, like, I've really enjoyed doing this, you know, in the last four years compared to anything I've done in my whole life. Wow. So yeah. it so it turned out well for you. It did. It did. It did. <laughs> wow. That yeah. is awesome, Dennis. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to come back to you. Uh, Joanna, I would love to hear your story. And um, if you could just share whether or not your pivot was intentional or accidental um, and a little bit about how everything evolved to get you to where you currently are at, at, at Avanti, that would be wonderful. Certainly. I would say making a change was fairly intentional, but where, where I ended up was a bit of a journey. So, um, uh, you know, as mentioned, I, I had started my previous job when I was 19. Uh, I worked through third and fourth year university and then started full time uh, as a land negotiator and then worked up to a senior land negotiator. And I had the opportunity to work on a lot of great projects in partner relations, negotiations, um, you know, working with business development, working really closely with our technical teams. I got some great exposure to government relations, working um, with the province of BC on tenure reform. Um, and yeah, it, it was great. But, you know, over the last few years, I was starting to really want to change and the opportunity to sort of learn something new and grow and expand my horizons. So, so Joanna, can I just, can I just, can I just ask you a question? I'm really curious. Were you loving what you were doing in the energy sector as a as a landman or as a land negotiator? There, there certainly were many, many years where I was, uh, and then that that changed a little bit. And it was, you know, I was starting to sort of look forward to going to work less, and uh, mm -hmm. and that, you know, I think I spent a lot of time working on changing things internally and trying to figure out, you know, how how can we influence change. And I think for me, working at a big organization where that's really hard to do, it got to a point where it was like, okay, well, I either have to, you know, just accept that this might be the way things go, go forward, or decide that, that maybe I need to make a change and look for something else. Um, 
which, which yeah, was a bit scary after being there for so long. Um, for me, you know, I benefited from a little bit of distance. I was on my second family leave. I have two little kids uh, and I had been off for a while and I, I was really not looking forward to going back. I wanted to try something new. Um, and so, so we were able to sort of part ways very amicably. And, and I, I started to sort of figure out what, what my next step was and and certainly getting into tech uh, was not my initial plan. I didn't know anything about the tech community in Calgary at the time. Um, you know, I didn't even know it existed. I had sort of stumbled onto it with from more of the policy standpoint, I was really interested in the government relations side of things. And so I had been looking uh, at some GR roles and organizations and through that, started learning a bit about the policy framework in Alberta for tech and innovation and that we had a lot of work to do and what some great organizations had been doing Calgary Economic Development, the Business Council of Alberta, um, and just just sort of reading more about tech and the ecosystem, uh, learning about uh, there's tons of organizations that are doing an amazing job sort of building that up in Alberta and it was really exciting following it along. So. I, uh, I started to sort of poke around and started attending ecosystem events and connecting with some of my network that were in tech already and asking people to put me in touch with other people. And I, uh, I'm, I'm like a textbook extrovert. I am not shy at all. So I was very forward in reaching out <laughs> to random strangers all over the place. And people were so welcoming and warm and happy to meet and chat through stuff. So it was awesome. Like I love meeting people and hearing their stories and, and getting to know about their, their companies and their backgrounds and their roles. So, um, so yeah, through, through that, I, uh, I, I got looped into Avanti and they, uh, it was quite a process. There was a five, five interviews, I think over three weeks and, um, they, I was referred to them by a friend and they never in a million years would have looked at me if that weren't it. My boss was very candid at the final stage of all of this. She was like, I took that first meeting as a favor. Never in a million years did I think I was going to hire you. Um, but they, uh, they took a chance on me and I, you know, I hope I haven't let them down so far. It's been a whirlwind. It's only been two and a half months, but it's been absolutely crazy. And it's, uh, it's been great. So what did you learn from that experience, Joanna? Uh, oh, certainly like resiliency and being, being open to change. Like for me, I, I was fairly open-minded from the beginning, uh, about, you know, as long as it was working with people and having a really relationship-based job for me has always been important and will always be important. So, uh, I, that was almost the problem is that I was, I felt like I, you know, there were so many different roads to go down. How do you sort of narrow it down and really figure out what you what you want to target? Um, but tech was super exciting to me, and the client success world uh, is so so uh, closely related to what I was doing before with regards to negotiations and relationship building, partner relations, um, and and as well like collaboration internally. It's it's been way more familiar than I was expecting. And I think that any of my colleagues were expecting. It's been, um, you know, a lot uh, easier to transition than I think any of us were expecting. So that was, that was great. It's certainly different in a lot of wonderful ways, but there's also a lot that's, that's really similar. And did you find the tech community welcoming of an oil and gas professional? So welcoming. Yeah, they were, they were great. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I think it goes both ways. I think that there were many years ago, I think there was a little bit more hes hesitancy from tech about, oh, well, if we hire our own gas people, they're just going to leave as soon as things change. But I, I think that that perspective is changing a lot. And certainly a lot of people that I'm, that I'm meeting that are looking to pivot into tech are very committed. This is not something that they're thinking of lightly. Like they, they want to make a full career pivot and they, they're thinking very long term. And where, is the, where are opportunities for growth and where does that lie um, in Calgary and, and globally? And, you know, tech is a great place to be for that. And are you having to consider upskilling or micro-credentialing at all at this point yet, Joanna? I, 
I have not had to do much. I did a little bit um, just kind of for fun. I was taking a software product management course just to get a little bit of a better understanding of some of the technical terms that they use with regards to software development, but I never had any intention to become a technical expert in tech. That's not that's not my wheelhouse. I'm, I'm more into the people side of things, but I wanted to understand a little bit how, um, you know, how the how the technical teams operated. So learning about, you know, agile software development and scrum methodologies, those were all technical terms that I kind of had heard about, but didn't know much about. And, um, and I certainly am, am by no means an expert, but getting a little bit of familiarity with some of the terminology and some of the, the, the styles was really helpful. So a lot of people are considering a, a pivot uh, like yourself from the energy sector to technology. What was your learning curve like? Uh, it's been, it's been high, certainly. Um, but I think that the transferable skills can't be understated. Like, I think one of the big things for me, um, that I'm looking for right now on my team and for potential hires is, is resiliency and adaptability. I think can't be understated. Like tech is an absolute whirlwind and it's a roller coaster and it's there's a lot of ambiguity and things change quickly and it's very fast paced during the day um and and i love that like that's not for everyone but i think that you know that having a positive outlook and being open to changing and sort of moving with the tides is really really important uh and it's it's something that's really hard to screen for in interviews and resumes so that's where like you know, I think Jackie, a lot of what your your program talks about with regards to networking and building those and getting to learn about different companies and different roles without having an ask of a, of a job, like actually being genuinely interested in what companies are doing and the people that are doing those roles uh, goes a really, really long way. And it, well, it has for me, certainly. That is wonderful. Well, I'm so happy that it worked out for you, Joanna. I'm going to I'm going to come back to you in a moment. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, okay, Zach, I would, we would like to, to hear from you. And um, I know that you've, you've had a very successful career in the oil and gas industry for a number of years. And um, I'd like to know, or we would like to know from you, was your pivot to the agriculture industry, uh, was it intentional? Was it accidental? And what was your story behind that? Sure. Thank you so much for having me, Jackie. I'm really happy to share here as well with the other participants and anyone else who's come in today. Um, you know, my my pivot was out of necessity. Um, you know, I I was let go from my former employer in November in 2019, which of course leads into the Christmas break. And, and anyone who's in oil and gas knows that that's kind of a, a vacant period for looking for work. Uh, you know, I quickly hit the ground running as best I could. Um, found the higher landing program and, and it quickly identified that that was something I wanted to do and, and I'd get into that in a bit. Um, but while I was doing that, I was definitely looking for work and opportunities. Um, you know, I've got a family to support uh, and, and bills to pay as many people do, I would imagine. <laughs> and what I found when we went into the pandemic is all of those opportunities got shut down very quickly and businesses froze as they didn't know what to expect. Um, and I still persevered and thanks to the higher line of community and the program that helped to motivate me through that, um, still managed to secure quite a few number of video interviews. Nothing came to fruition. Um, but you know, again, I stayed at it. Tenacity was the key and having a support network, um, that I had through the higher line of community was really important to me, uh, eventually transitioning from being a participant into a facilitator. Uh, so being able to give back there, but, um, through networking, through continuing looking, uh, you know, I found some very unique opportunities um, in technology, in geothermal, and in agriculture. And as it turned out, my broader network connected with the ASF on a couple of different uh, aspects. And I was able to get in front of a hiring manager there, uh, as well as through the hiring process. Um, and I didn't get the first role, but I did get the second one. And here I am today. Uh, you know, I would encourage anyone who's considering a pivot um, maybe, maybe don't consider it as permanent, maybe consider it as, um, a stepping stone and you're not saying goodbye to the past. It's still a part of you. And if it really doesn't work and there's an opportunity to go back and you really feel like that's something you'd want to do, you can't, um, that might take some of the fear factor out of it. So Zach, you had an interesting story because, uh, you went back to BASF or they, they called you back. 
Yeah. So I went through the first interview and I was so strong in the first interview, just kind of conveying my experience, um, my abilities as a, as a problem solver, as someone who's curious. Because you had, you had no previous experience in agriculture, correct? No, I have none, none in agriculture whatsoever. And BASF is a broader organization as a chemical company to boot. Um, This entity that he is here in Calgary actually is a result of a, of a purchase they had to make. And so now they have a dominant position in, uh, canola seeds, <laughs> believe it or not. And so I'm supporting the business as it sells canola seeds and the stuff that they spray on it now uh, from a finance side of all things, right? So I have a background in engineering. I went back to do an MBA on purpose, hoping to advance my career. And as it turns out, having that business background was one of the key credentials that allowed me to uh, even apply to knock on the door for this opportunity. But it was my ability to kind of market myself and sell myself and my skill set. And being able to translate what I had done before into what I could do in the future is the work I did when I was in the program. And so I really had a great appreciation for that. And Zach, why did they call you back a second time and make you an offer? Um, You know, I really, I really think I might've been a bit too senior for the first role. I think they were looking for, to bring in someone who is, because when I look at the way they're just trying to layer their team, um, they brought in someone who is maybe five to 10 years my junior. And did they, did they proactively reach out to you or did you apply for another job there? Well, when they called to tell me I didn't get the first job, that's when they said, you know what, the hiring manager liked you so much. They really want you in the process for the next position. Uh, and so I just kept watching it. Oh. When it came up, I contacted the HR person, uh, again, who I'd had a great rapport with right from day one. And she confirmed, yeah, that's the role. Please apply. I was going to email you, but thank you for reaching out. Wow. What do you think they liked about you? Because they obviously Um, remembered you. Obviously. Uh, (laughs) Well, you know, I I do try to be a little bit uh, memorable. Um, And, uh, you know, honestly, like a lot of it just came down to the amount of practice I had, I think, on communicating who I was authentically. And a lot of that came down to facilitating and the practice I had with my cohort. So I do a lot of credit to Highland for that. Wow. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Zach. We're going to come back to you in a moment. Uh, Yusuf, uh, we would love to hear from you because uh, Yusuf also has had a very successful international career working around the world uh, for one of probably the world's largest um, oil and gas service companies. And you really worked from, you You must have, um, like, I'm really curious to know, Yusuf, did you love what you did? Because you seem to have a very successful and progressive career there. And, uh, and then you ended up making a pivot to Amazon. Tell us, I mean, was that intentional or was that accidental or how did that come about? So thanks, Jackie, for having me on. So, um, you know, the and we can see that-, that you're actually working at Amazon. You're not, uh, you're not in your basement somewhere, right? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, so the um, leaving the previous employer was intentional, but landing here was actually pure um, accident per se um so i was with with the previous employer for 16 years and uh, you know worked in in few places with them so um but in 2016 i realized that the whole industry as a whole is not going to do well so i started kind of planning to to change industry so and that's how i got into the mba and cfa and all kind of stuff uh, to kind of get into finance. So I wanted to be a peer with Dennis, basically. So I wanted to get into the commercial banking or investment banking. So it took me three, four years and I'm upgrading myself while I'm working. So it got to the point that, you know, after pandemic, you know, my boss is sitting in Houston and he calls me, says, Yusef, you know, basically we have two choices. You got to move to Houston or it's going to be one week, basically. So we let you go. So um, my wife is a financial planner here in Canada. So she's, she's with Scotia Bank. Canadian rules are totally different from US banks. So we flipped the coin and, you know, we said, okay, I, I can lose my job. So um, as simple as that. And, uh, you know, I contacted the boss basically in Houston and I said, yes, you know, I'm, I'm ready for it. And uh, the chance of me getting the job was higher. Um, than my wife funding the job in, in, in Houston. So we went with that and um, 
basically after one week, obviously I was out of the job and I was actually contacting and basically attending a lot of uh, meetings in finance with banking people. So, and I'm- uh, Sorry, Lisa, I just uh -huh. want to stop you for a moment. Uh -huh. How did mm -hmm. you feel after leaving, you know, you were with that same company for over 15 years and they basically gave you a week and you're gone. How did that they, feel for you? They so they were very polite and courteous. In in fact, they gave me the option. They gave me the promotion option to Houston. So I didn't feel like that I'm being let go. I felt like that this is my choice now. So I had actually the the, the option to move to Houston, get the promotion, but my right. wife without the job. Right. And so how it did was it feel, yeah. though? all of a sudden you're just out of a 15 year job, your career. How did it feel when you left? Yeah, it, I, to be honest, it, it was shocking in the first few days. But after, you know, five, six days, I was, you know, I, again, you know, my my intention was from 2016. So I was kind of planning in the background to switch the industry anyways. So um, it was shocking in the beginning, but you're right. So after 16 years, suddenly, you know, you're, you're, you don't have your laptop. You cannot log into the same websites. You cannot get the same reports. You cannot. So it's, yeah, the life changes, basically. Um, yeah, and, and then I started basically networking with banking people. And funny enough, one of the banking people is telling me that, hey, you know, um, Amazon is, is opening a... A delivery station here in Calgary. Do you know that you know they basically you know look for operations manager? And you know I had no idea basically. So that's how I basically applied for the job and pulled some strings. And uh, the interview story is also very unique. Um, but I will save that for later, Jackie. So that's my story basically. <laughs> because it didn't it didn't just happen overnight, did it, Yusuf? No, it did not. <laughs> Okay, we're going to come back, come back to that because you were certainly an inspiration of hanging for hanging in there. Wow. Um, thank you. Okay, Kevin, Kevin Asani, I uh, we would love to hear from you. So you've spent uh, a number of years in project engineering and leadership roles, mainly in the drilling industry, and uh, and then you recently made a pivot to the director of I think it was mechanical engineering for a mining technologies company. And you just decided that that probably wasn't for you. Why is that? Yeah. Tell, us, tell us the story, tell us what happened. Tell us how you made you made the pivot. Was it intentional? Was it accidental? Um, and then what happened? Yeah, um, thank you for having me, Jackie. And uh, hello, everybody. Yeah, uh, I have, um, you know, this story goes back uh, to basically a long time. And, you know, over the years, um, obviously, when you start your career, um, in my situation, I had to, uh, I had dependents uh, that I had to support. And uh, obviously, I started my career on the right foot, uh, you know, luckily with the international largest international service provider, the same company that Yusuf was working. Um, you know, throughout the years, I realized that, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, financial rewards are something uh, very important. Uh, but after you pass the point that, uh, you know, you pass that desperation point and you satisfy your basic needs, uh, is not rewarding at all. And, and throughout the years, I don't know, this is the age, this is the self-awareness or, or basically experience, life experience that you realize that either you, you better do something that you like, or you cannot even bear doing the repetitive things that you could do in the past. Um, I had it like vaguely in my mind, even from early 2000s, that you better stick to what you're good at and what you like. And, and my dad used to preach that, but it takes time to really absorb it and understand it. So um, in mid to, uh, like 2010, 15 and that kind of range, I realized that I really need to pivot. But I had to prepare and I could think of pivoting within the industry, meaning I didn't want to do the pure engineering day to day job, just basically doing repetitive design analysis, you know, construction, project management, that kind of thing. So I did my MBA and I started negotiating with my uh, 
executives at the previous employer. And, and they promised me I have a good future and all that, uh, which was basically in line. And, and unfortunately, the businesses started going south and, and, and south in, in two, literally south, meaning going to United States and south in terms of overall oil and gas was not really doing well. So uh, at that point, I really started planning and I started the side business on my own, try to uh, generate a revenue stream so I can basically depend on and thank God, uh, you know, things that started working with the uh, e-commerce and then I started with the blockchain technology, Bitcoin mining and all that uh, on the side. While um, I was negotiating with my previous employer, I realized that um, Honestly, uh, it wasn't in their agenda to make sure that I reach my potential, uh, which is very <laughs> da <laughs> normal. But anyway, I, I, I wanted to confirm that because I didn't want to just walk away from uh, a good paying job with a good future. I didn't want to look back and regret. So when things started really getting, um, I would say, to a point that I completely disappointed uh, in uh, late 2019, uh, it was a kind of mutual agreement that kind of, I moved on. I moved on, I got my package and, uh, you know, and unfortunately after that pandemic hit, but I wasn't in a rush to get a job. Um, I came across your program. I found it very interesting in a sense that it was basically connecting all these dots that I had in the past on a structure in my head from the MBA, from the leadership courses that I had, life experience and all that. Um, realize that, you know what, either you do what you like, or you can wait. Obviously, there are people that you need to support, and including yourself and their financial needs. Um, that is different for everybody. Uh, but you, you don't, you don't need to really like, let go your passion, your, your overall life goals and whatnot. Along those lines, I came across the um, opportunity at MindSense. Um, obviously, I wanted to give it a try. Um, I went through eight different interviews. Um, and where basically. was it? So Kevin, you are currently living in Calgary and Calgary. MindSense is in Vancouver, correct? Vancouver, BC, yeah. Um, did they, did they requ require that you relocate? Yes. Um, and I went and worked there actually physically for a month and a half. Uh, what happened was during the pandemic, you don't get the chance to go and meet and greet people personally. You have to go to Zoom interviews and all that. So that basically gives you a little bit of, might, might give you a false impression of, of the opportunity and the company. And also uh, you don't know what you don't know. Uh, that's why I agree with, uh, with what Zach says, you know what, don't be afraid. They're not gonna come and arrest you and kill you. Uh, you give it a shot, it might work, it might not, but at least you tried. And, and this itself was a great experience for me. So what I found throughout this experience is that I better forget about the pure engineering jobs. Um, although I consider myself a good engineer, a good product developer, but I can only um, work and perform under certain circumstances. And those circumstances are when I'm a decision maker, when we are at the very early level of a startup company, you are, you are actually very active, throwing ideas there at the, the whiteboard, and, and I'm not a nine to five person. I can, sometimes I'm up till like three o'clock in the morning and then I sleep till like 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, the, I'm not a regular person that do a nine to five job. So I really realized that I cannot take it anymore. But during these three months, I made sure that I added value. I provided some product improvements and all that. They liked it. And I made sure that I did a transition, good handover. I'm still in touch with them. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, and, and then also the entrepreneurial, uh, you know, uh, basically side of me is, is strong. I, I really realize that I'm more gearing toward that kind of uh, side and then focusing on my side business, trying to expand it. Um, and, and, you know, thank God, I mean, the plans worked out and financially, I'm not really in desperate need to find a job, but I'm still looking for uh, interesting opportunities. Beautiful. Thank you, Kevin. Wow. What a, what a tremendous story. And, and so inspirational to hear from all of you. Um, I'm going to ask you a few more questions and then I'm going to open it up for Q&A. So if uh, those of you in the audience could start thinking about any questions you might have for, for the speakers today, that would be great. I know that a few of our speakers have got to leave right at one o'clock um, because they've got to go back to work. 
Uh, so we have to be very mindful of their, of their time. Uh, Joanna, I just wanted to go back to you. And um, when you look back at your at your pivot, what would you say were say a couple of the critical success factors that allowed you to successfully pivot? And what advice would you have for those considering uh, a similar move? Uh, certainly, I I think you know I mentioned this before, but don't be shy, like reaching out to people and asking for help and asking to hear their story goes a long way. Like I'm still shocked at, I, you know, I get a lot of LinkedIn requests from people and very few send a note and say like, Hey, would you have time to chat or, you know, like, cause that's what I was doing all the time. I was like really throwing it out there and I think so. You I know think what's going to happen now, Joanna? You're going to you're going to have a, you're going to have you're going to have a slew of higher landing clients reaching out to you. Could you mind telling me a little bit about what you do? I want to learn about your industry. <laughs> yeah, no, but but I like honestly reaching out to, to to strangers or people that you have any connections with and asking them to put you in touch with other people. It really goes a long way, and and I think you know like I didn't make it through much of the program. I had already started my interview process when I started. So I only made it through about three weeks, but I think for me, um, you know, what, what really resonated was that, that genuine interest, like really making sure that there's, that you don't have an ask of, of people when you're, when you're trying to sit down with them, that you genuinely just want to hear their story and learn about different roles, learn about different industries and try and figure out where you can add value. That was the big thing for me with tech is like, I needed to figure out what people did in this industry and where could I help? Like where, where would my skill set really relate? Uh, and particularly with a business background, I really didn't know if there was a spot for me in tech, but there are lots of roles that don't require a super technical background uh, where you can add would a you lot be able of to comment on? Would you be able to comment on that, Joanna, for the benefit of our clients that might be considering pivoting to those roles? Absolutely. Yeah. Client success or customer success is something that pretty much every tech company and certainly every growing tech company will have. Um, there's a great book by Dan Steinman and um, Nick Mehta, I think, are the authors called Customer Success. And it, it's just like a great overview of, of sort of that industry. It's fairly new. It's sort of the role's only been around for about 20 years, but there, there's so much growth potential there. And so many transferable skills are relevant to it. Relationship building, negotiations, like strong business background, um, or just business um, acumen, really. You don't even need necessarily business background. I'd say with a little bit more of a technical sort of project management role is implementations teams. Um, most SaaS companies have, um, and they, they're sort of a project manager. So when a, when a client joins on, after they come through sales, they go to the implementation team to actually have their product sort of built out and configured to the way that they need it and they, they learn how to use it. So that role is very client facing. So you still need to have those great people skills um, but it's a bit more technical. You have to really get a good understanding of the product that your company is selling and working with, um, as well as project management, because you need to make sure that you're sticking to timelines and that you're not going over budget and that you're able to actually get this done in a timely manner so that clients are able to use your new product. Um, so those are sort of certainly customer success, client success is my world. And then we work really closely with implementations. Um, product owners are another sort of hybrid technical role without necessarily being developers. And they come from a lot of different backgrounds. So product management or product owner um, is another field that I, again, didn't know existed, but it's super interesting, like really um, project management. And they're, they sort of, to me, act as like this great translator link between um, the really technical side and sort of that client facing side. So, so there's lots of options. Wow. So what I'm hearing, and this is really a question for all of uh, you panelists, um, is that you do not necessarily need to have additional uh, or specific training in order to successfully pivot. Is that fair? Zach, what about you? Um, I, I mean, I would agree. Uh, you know, when I went back to school to do an MBA, it was the pivot out of a hardcore engineering role and more into the business side of things. 
never once that I think that I would be living through a pandemic, having to look through, look for a job. And because I now had this extra credential, I could leverage it. Um, but I would agree in the sense that what you have today is valuable to somebody. Um, but before you can go out and, and find that somebody, you have to find out what's valuable first. Right. Right. So how did you find out what, what was valuable? Um, you know, I've always been a big proponent of, of self-awareness and kind of that kind of look at life in general and, and with a growth mindset. Um, you know, I've been fortunate when I came through my MBA, I had some excellent career services that kind of took me through that again. But one thing I quickly recognized when I was introduced to the higher landing program um, was that uh, higher landing had really kind of identified all the best practices around that and brought them together and a really positive environment. And so I was really happy to embrace that and go down that journey again. Um, because I needed the refresher, I really did, and I needed the motivation. And by going through kind of the inward looking, identifying where, you know, who you are and, and connecting head to heart, and then then being able to kind of catalog that and say, okay, here's, here's what I'd like to do. And then taking a look at your skill set and saying, here's the things I do really well. You know, I like to, I like to problem solve. I like to network. I like to do this, I like to do that. And then turn that around and go, okay, now I've got a, a template. Who can use this? You know, to what Joanna just said, there are a lot of roles out there that use your skill sets. It's just trying to find out what they're even called. And once you figure that out, then you can kind of start to frame yourself. How do I go and sell myself to that? And there's the other side of the program that really came through to me. You know, someone's not going to come looking for me. I have to be able to translate it into their language and go and put it in front of them so that they know what I can do for them. And that was key. That, uh, that really helped me kind of uh, start to move forward. So it was being more proactive rather than reactive. Yeah, but you know, back to your original question, did I need more additional credentialing? I myself didn't. Others might find it beneficial depending on what role they're looking to land. Is there any other advice that you would give for uh, somebody from the energy sector considering a pivot to uh, the agriculture or I guess the chemicals industry? Um, be prepared to be uncomfortable. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I think that would be my key takeaway or tagline. You know, I find myself on a daily basis having to kind of ask what I would consider the dumb question, like, can you please tell me what that product is and what it does? Or why is it organized in this way? You know, I'm moving from an entity that was drilling a well and moving, moving a substance to a hub and selling it. I'm now in a manufacturing business where they have multiple different products that go through multiple different channels and they can get touched and handled in many different ways. And it's completely different than what I had done before. Wow, that is wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Zach. Uh, Yusuf, I, I want to hear the, uh, the rest of your story because I know that, uh, that you, have a, you have an excellent one with respect to what you endured to finally land your job at Amazon because I can just imagine what's going through the minds of a lot of our clients is how do I get hired at Amazon? No, thanks, Jackie. So the, um, you know, the, the phone screen is kind of the first step. And, you know, I, I had to talk to a lot of people connections through Amazon to understand what basically happens through the phone screen. And, uh, well, <laughs> not a biggie. So, you know, it, it, it's kind of, you know, half an hour of just generic questions. And then they can kind of set you up for, for interview, which you, you will be five people back to back, each of them around 50 minutes, 10 minutes break, and the next people, the next person comes. So I was absolutely nervous. That was my first interview, 16 years out of practice. Basically, I was in the room and Jackie walks in. I was attending the course and Jackie walks in and, he, and she says, um, interview is not about you let the other person talk ask ip and i said what is this lady talking about so i need to go and prove myself i need to you know tell my story and she says no let the other person talk I said, okay so i walk in next day five back-to-back -back interviews so they ask me questions and then i have around 10 minutes to ask them questions there was nothing that I didn't know about the job. I had done my homework. So the 10 minutes was all IP. So what's your story, you know, and I, I, you know, one of them was from India. So I worked in India, we talked about Mumbai. One of them was investment banking. We talked about uh, 
I had him talk about the financial markets. One of them was actually hired at Amazon while he was working for another company. So I had him tell me his story. So, and then I walked out of that interview and I said, there is no way that I can get in because I didn't talk about myself. I, I just had them talk. And then sure enough, after two days, they called me that yeah, we want you. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, uh, Jackie. So that piece of advice actually was very, very useful for, for interview. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. So IP, for those of you that are not yet familiar with IP, IP stands for the two most important questions to ask anybody in any important conversation, especially a job interview. I, what's important to you? And P, what are your pain points? So that's wonderful. Yusuf, if, for, what advice would you give a transitioning oil and gas worker that might be interested in working at an organization like Amazon? The, you know, the, the advice is to know the business very well, know your capabilities and see how your capabilities can fit to the new organization. So for example, I was not aware that within the Amazon, there is an operations manager position. I wasn't actually aware of it. So that's my flaw. So if, if you're looking into other industries, see what positions are having a huge over, overlap with what you're doing now. So it will be very easy to explain because you don't need to sell anything. So it, the, the hiring manager would know. Interesting, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Okay, uh, Dennis, I'm very curious. We've got a lot of uh, uh, oil and gas clients that have expressed an interest in pivoting into banking. And I'm wondering what advice would you have for, for those people? Uh, the, first, the, first thing I, the first thing I would say is, uh, you know, know who you are. You know, like that whole self-awareness thing. At once I found that out, I, like, you know, like it was something everybody knew, but it's something I didn't know. You know, like, so, but when I made a name to it, I put a name to this is who I am, you know, it's who I was or who I am. Uh, when I went to these interviews, I, I spoke about who I am, you know, like before then I thought I was a production geologist. I was a geoscientist, but I just realized that, no, that's just a skill. That's not who you are. You know, this is who I am. I'm a relationship builder. You know, I'm like, I'm an explorer and, and those things I can relate, I can relate my life experiences, you know, I can relate to them so that when I go into an interview, like, you know, like when I leave the interview, they will think about me, like, you know, when they sleep, they will think about me, you know, because I genuinely, you know, is I'm just being genuine. So I think for me, that was uh, one, you know, success criteria, like in the bank. And, you know, if you want to go into financial services, so depending on where you're going into, right, you want to um, maybe, I, I've noticed the industry, they want to find some comfort around you first, uh, before they start moving you around. Um, so most times I'll tell people like, hey, maybe you want to start at something, get your leg into the door, you know, and get, you know, build some interest, build some, um, some, you know, some acumen, you know, know like how things work within the system. Uh, then you, you know, you can start, you know, building up. Because I know people reach out to me like, hey, I'm looking for that role. And I'm like, ah, it might be challenging. I know, you know, you have, uh, um, you have like transferable skills, but you want to get into the system for them to trust you. For them to know that okay. you have the capability to do it, you know, for you. So to you do. really have to then check your ego aside and be willing to start wherever you can, you can, you can get in the, to the organization. Is that fair, Dennis? Yeah, that's that's you know that that would be my advice. Yeah. So uh, forget about the forget about you know the two hundred and fifty k you've earned before in the past. Forget about all of that and you know and just learn something new. You know, for me it was. Um, there was one time I was having an interview and I didn't know it was an interview. So um, th that was because, you know, the next job, somebody reached out to the other guy and he said, hey, let's meet for coffee. And we we're chatting and I was laughing and, you know, but just being who I am. And he was like, you know, I'm going to offer you another job. I was like, oh, really? You know, but <laughs> so, but the thing about it is for me, like I learned is like not being, not being scared to start small you know, and learn through the process to get to where you want to go. So, so a question, question for you, Dennis, how long was it? How long did it take before you got your first promotion or new, new opportunity at the bank? 
It actually took three months, actually. So, <laughs> so I, I was at the call center and, um, you know, you know, I've learned, you know, you know, come from where I'm like just being diligent at what you do and, you know, just be diligent at what you do and, you know, know who you are. I remember at the call center one time there was somebody, you know, long stories, but you just do things that, you know, be yourself, you know. So the third month, you know, I got a promotion, you know, like um, uh, then after, you know, six months after time, I got another promotion. So it was really fast. It was just and each time I think about it. Uh, you know, if when I went for those conversations, it was just about like, hey, the values you brought to the organization, you know, that was, you know, you know, what cost those promotions, you know, so, um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. <laughs> Is there any other advice that you would give to a transitioning oil and gas worker? Yeah, I would, I would always say, you know, maybe using my experience that, you know, if you, if you, number one, you know, be aware of yourself. You know, know what you who you are. You know, know what you can do. Then, if you if you find a place, you know, try to try to get in. You know, uh, try to learn the culture. Um, you know, start from from a point, and then you move on. Um, the other thing I'm going to say is like, you know, be humble, be consistent. You know, uh, be consistent with who you are. You know, it's not about like because of I wanted the job. Um, it's not because of what I want, and you you really need to know. Just like I, I've seen with many oil and gas people, I've seen many. You know, if you think about what drove you to oil and gas, you know, like you need to find that value. You need to find what really drove you there, because if you really can find it, if you really can, then you know, you know, it kind of helps you. For me, just like I said, money drove me to be able to help. But right now, right. I do what I love doing. Like you know, if time I go to bed at night, I miss my job. The next morning, I want to go. Because I love wow. doing it. I really, really love doing it. So, um, And how many people can truly say that and mean it, Dennis? Yeah, you know, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so that's that it. That is wonderful. And building those relationships. And, and everybody's been talking about it, networking, you know, talking to people. Um, you know, just, um, you know, keep talking to people, learn from experiences, um, you know, don't be shy. You know, you're not going to fall. You know, people are thinking they're going to take a big dip and I'm just going to, you're going to sink, you know, just be, uh, you know, just be brave, take that jump and you'll be successful. So it, 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 it's about being courageous and believing in yourself by the sounds of it, Dennis. Yes, it is like, yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's been brave. And, and the one last thing I just want to say again is the, um, the net, that network, the, you know, the higher landing um, network you build, it's amazing. Like, you know, I, I can't overemphasize it. Like, they're just amazing people, you know, like they're like a support group, you know, if you need help, they will always help you. You know, I, you know, the last, in the last um, cohorts I joined, it was just amazing. The people are just amazing. So I, I would, you know, tell everybody to also take advantage of that network. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Dennis. I know that was one of the questions in, in the chat here. I'm interested to know how higher landing is helping individuals to pivot their career. And uh, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of the help that people like all of you, especially panelists, have provided, um, provided their peers and, uh, and the alumni. So uh, thank you so, so much. Um, I think that you've changed more lives than, than you, can, you can ever possibly know. Just a quick uh, time check the in. I uh, just yeah. wanted to say that Zach and Yusef have to um, jump off right away here. So if you had any last I think comments or anything for them, then uh, now's the time. Okay. Uh, does it, first of all, to the panelists, is there anything else that you feel that you would like to share with, uh, with the group today? Yeah. Um, don't quit. Tenacity. You know, have some grit. You'll get through this. If you want, if you want to transition, you'll be able to make it happen. Um, and but you have uh, to that, want it, right, Zach? Yeah, you got to want it, and you got to keep chasing it. And you know what? You may have to do something to bridge it in the interim, and that's okay. And even if you pivot and you don't like it, and you choose to go back, that's okay too. What's not okay is standing still. You know, have enough courage to face the future, and have enough tenacity to go after it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Zach. Very well, well said. Anybody else? Joanna, Yusuf? 
No, from my side, thank you very much for having me. The, the last word from me is that, you know, find something which is in line with your values, then you stick around. So you, you kind of would love hopefully that job. So, but be consistent, uh, don't give up that easily. So if, if you're chasing something which you love, you will get it. Beautiful. And look what happened to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. I know that you have to, you have to run. So uh, I am most grateful for your time. And, Thank you and very much. Sage advice. Thank, Thank you very you. much for having me. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. And thank you very much, Zach, as well. Your your advice has been uh, life changing, really, to so many of us. Um, uh, Dennis, any any last words of advice from you? Uh, yeah, I think um, everyone has reacted. Uh, um, everybody has reacted. I uh, think the things I would say. The one thing I'll say is like just realize that um, your uh, how would I put it like you know I, I just don't want to be like anybody else I just want to be myself I don't want to compare mm -hmm. myself with other people's successes and what they get and not get you know I've just learned to be myself and you know love what I do and be accountable to myself you know sometimes I know there are lots of people out there looking at every other person and trying to be that person but find out what you want to do I still remember you know, telling people I want to go work as a customer service guy. And I, I, people keep telling me like, why? Why do you, you have two masters in geosciences. Why would you want to be a customer service guy? And I was like, well, that's what I love to do. It makes me happy every month. If it makes you happy and you want to do it, do it. You know, just don't let every, what everybody says about decide, you know, your direction. You know, so it's something I, I would never forget, you know, like, it's like people say, no, you're not going to be successful at it. No, you can't pay your bills out of it. But, right. you know, it turned out to be like, the best decision of my life, you know, so. Wow. So that's what I'm. What uh, an inspiration, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Joanna, are there any last words of advice from you? Well, I want to stop following Dennis. It's making me look bad. It's a tough, tough act to follow. <laughs> that's my, <laughs> I want to go first next time. Uh, yeah, no, I think, you know, I, I think one of the questions in the chat that had come up earlier was like, what was, what was the hardest part? And I think it's, you know, certainly I went through a little bit of a phase where I was just like applying for jobs online and never hearing back. And that was like really depressing for me and like, particularly without any sort of interaction. Um, and for me, I much preferred getting out and being proactive and just talking to people about what they do and what makes them tick every day and like learning about different industries and roles um so i'd say like trying not to get discouraged by that i know it's something that you know you kind of feel like you need to do but that's not where i recommend focusing your time like build networks get involved in communities volunteer for stuff that you're interested in and you'll be amazed at the type of people that you meet that that have other connections and don't be shy in in reaching out to people and and trying to to build those bridges and really learn uh, kind of continuously and and learn to love that too um right. i know it's not for everyone particularly um you know my husband has like a very very different personality than me and you know networking and reaching out to people is not would not be his his wheelhouse but um but i think the, the so more so what would you recommend to somebody that is say less less extroverted than you you know i think i think unfortunately i kind of recommend like forcing yourself to do it and you don't have to you don't have to be as crazy as me maybe like reaching out to random strangers but like look at who you already know look at your you know your former colleagues and talk to them about uh who like you know who they might know that have different roles and different backgrounds and really be open-minded about learning about what other people do and what other industries there are um and and try to figure out where you might be happy and what you might enjoy uh because i think that's a big thing is that there there's a lot out there you just kind of need to need to go after it and put yourself out there and be open-minded to it right beautiful thank you so much joanna you are an inspiration well thanks uh, okay. <laughs> Kevin, is there anything that you would like to share with the group? Is there anybody that has any questions for the remaining panelists? 
Hi, it's Denise here. Uh, just a quick question. I'm sensing that there was sort of some some individuals in the panel applied and went through their landed their job the old fashioned way. Others, it was through, you know, in, networking. So I'd just kind of be curious for those that are on the panel that are still there, how many did actually go through the old fashioned way, you know, on Indeed, you see it, you apply versus um, through the networking. Uh, I would say for, okay, I would say for uh, my first, like the my first job, I just applied through the normal way through Indeed, you know, to get the uh, the role. Uh, then at once you build, um, you know, you build the network. Like the second job, I noticed was through my network. You know, so just um, reaching out to people. Then I learned some tricks from uh, I learned about reaching out to people who were connected to, you know, all that stuff. So kind of follow that stuff as well. It's interesting how the hiring manager got ten recommendations from people. Uh, you know, from his connection about one person, and he was very curious about who that person is. You know, so first one was normal, but the second one was via um, like true, true um, network, internal network, internal network. Yeah. Beautiful. I would just like to close by sincerely thanking the panelists for their time and for their stories. You've each been. Uh, most inspirational and helpful to those that are considering um, a pivot. If anyone is interested in considering a pivot, please do reach out to us. And uh, we, we have information sessions that we offer twice a month. Um, you're welcome to attend those. You can register for those on our website. Uh, we also have Grizzly Dan, something unique to our program is our Grizzly Dan. And uh, you're welcome to, uh, to register for those um, on our website as well. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody. It has been an absolute pleasure, and I'm hoping to have you back again soon. You've been wonderful. Thank you.